Hi everyone, welcome to the LinCam TV show. I'm your host Cassie Vitale and joining me today is the Honorable Mayor Judith Flanagan Kennedy. Thank you so much for being here. Cassie, I love your snazzy intro music. Thank you very much. It's we it's some rock music. We've we've kept it over the years and uh it's something unique because it's not like a song that's you know on the radio. So thank right. you. Uh I appreciate you coming in today. I know you've been so busy. Um it's always a nice break to come and talk with you. I'm happy to hear that. It's been um it's it's our pleasure to have you here. It's been a very busy campaign season. Um, you know, I know you've had so many events, more debates than I can remember any time in my, you know, recollection of um, going out to so many different venues to have discussions, which a lot of have, a lot of them have overlap of information. So I'm hoping today, you know, we can talk a little bit and have a conversation instead of you having to answer in sound bites and in, you know, one minute increments. I think that's a really good format. <laughs> we actually so. had seven debates this season. Um, so and I think four years ago when I ran, there were four debates that I can remember. Uh, even the, the presidential debates, there were maybe three. I think the Boston mayoral candidates have scheduled three. And after seven, uh, we really started to run out of ways to say the same thing over and over so and it'll be nice to have a different conversation today definitely it's great that a lot of people want to have you know the conversations um the debates at their you know venues for their organizations and their clubs it's good that they want to be involved and informed but yes a lot of the same topics will come up and uh you know even four years ago when you did have your last race that was a big race um and, and this race um, has turned out being a very busy one as well. So to start off, I, I just wanted to give people a chance, if they've never really heard about your background, can you talk a little bit about your family and how you got into politics? Sure. Um, I actually grew up in Westland. Um, I went to Lincoln Elementary School, Breed Junior High School, and Lynn Classical. And from there, I went to Tufts University. I did a double major in psychology and classical studies and um, went from there to law school at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, practiced law for 14 years, got married in the interim. I have two children, uh, we have two children. Colin, he's 17 and he is a senior at Lynn English, so a big year for him. And Mia is 15 and she's a sophomore at Lynn English. Um, my uh, husband, Kevin, works at Fidelity Investments plays in a band called Shuffle Mode. They're um, pretty popular around the Lynn area. And now my son is following in his footsteps and playing in a band called Dirty Floorboards. So uh, there's a lot of musical instruments around my house. <laughs> my daughter also plays. She plays piano and flute. And um, most recently, uh, I saw a package from Amazon.com, looked in it, and there was a trumpet in there. <laughs> and I didn't know who that belonged to. And my daughter told me she decided to take up the trumpet now, too. So wow. um, I a call them the Von Trapp family <laughs> <laughs> in the house. Um, I got in, I guess the roots of my getting into politics probably came from my mother and father. They were not a political family. Um, they were not even from Lynn. My mother is from Revere. And my father was from Brookline, but they bought their first home where my mother still lives, here in Lynn, and uh, moved in when I was three months old. And I remember during those days that I was at elementary school, we didn't have school lunches. So the school would dismiss us at midday, and we'd all have to walk home, rain or shine, hot or cold, eat our lunch, and then walk back to school. And my father decided that that really was cutting into kids' learning time and felt very strongly that the schools should be offering up school lunches. So he became involved in that. Okay. And from there he became involved in other political campaigns. Um, Scott Poole, who had been the Ward 7 city councilor years ago, and Tim Bassett, who had been our state rep. So um, I guess politics was always in the background mm -hmm. in my um, time growing up. But it wasn't until after I got out of law school that I decided that maybe I could make a difference. I had seen a little bit more of the world mm -hmm. by being in college and law school and, and said, you know, maybe I can bring some of those ideas back to Lynn. And that's when I decided to run for the school committee. Uh, of course, I decided late. I didn't know anything about nomination papers at that time. So I said, well, I'm going to do it anyway. I had to run a sticker campaign. And I have to say, Debbie Smith Walsh heard about me somehow 
and came over and showed me the basics of running a sticker campaign. That's great. And here I am now. So you did school committee, you um, did the city council, you've now been mayor, you've, you've progressed and obviously um, as you've gone into bigger and bigger roles, uh, you've maintained your commitment to trying to make changes and influences in the community. Exactly, exactly. And, and I really do think I had been talking with you before the show about um, my parents really having a big influence in that part of my life. My, my father was a very dogged individual. Um, he passed away when he was 61 years old. He oh, had been a type 1 diabetic mm -hmm. um, and never let it slow him down. And in fact, as with a lot of diabetics, it started to affect his extremities. And at one point in the 1980s, it became so severe that he was going to have to go in and have an amputation. Um, his big toe was going his to be toe. amputated. So <laughs> we were worried, of course, um, and we were grateful to see him in the recovery room. And the first words out of his mouth when he came out of uh, the anesthesia was, I guess I can only count to 19 now. <laughs> he, did, he just had a really, <laughs> really good attitude. And, and I like to carry that good attitude with me and, and try to find some humor or some positivity in even the most negative of, of times. Well, I know I knew you were grinning like when you told that story, so I knew something funny had to be coming. You told me <laughs> that he had a good sense of humor yeah. uh, before the show. So, you know, having a family uh, who got involved and made changes inspired you, and you've now been doing this job as mayor for the last four years. What have been some of your um, proudest accomplishments since you've been in office? Well, I think I'm sensing a change in attitude from Linners about the possibilities in their city. And I think that that tone is set from the top. Um, I know for years we all uh, seemed to be almost a little bit apologetic about coming from Lynn, mm -hmm. because we've all received those looks of sympathy when we're talking to somebody that we've just met, and they say, oh, where do you live? You say Lynn, and they look at you like, what's the matter, you couldn't get out? Right. And, and I don't think that that attitude is the prevalent one anymore. I think um, what I hear from people is, oh, Lynn's really turning a corner. Lynn is really up and coming. I'm hearing that there is some great food spots to go, or I, I've been to the auditorium and, and I've seen what a beautiful job the city has done in, in really making the auditorium a centerpiece for bringing people back to the city and, and almost rediscovering what we have to offer here. And a lot of the people who don't live in Lynn, if they haven't been to Lynn, really are in no place to be able to have sort of a real sense of what they would think. It's more just that old hearsay, that old, you know, um, sort of stereotype that came from, you know, who knows where um, when they hear it. But when we look at Lynn now, you see, like you mentioned, the restaurants, there's a lot of diverse populations. There's always more people coming when they come to the U.S. and they come to Massachusetts, they come to Lynn. So I think that's something we should be proud of. Um, Girls Inc., I know, you know, had the t-shirts um, from Lynn and proud of it. I and, own um, one. And I, it's a great t-shirt. There's been lots of, like you said, sort of that changing dynamic. You've got people downtown who are trying to um, bring in, you know, young families to live in the lofts and in the old historic buildings. One of the things that just happened last night as an example of like a positive community thing is we have a lot of food vendors, um, places that manufacture, or excuse me, like put together, you know, different types of food products, Side Kim Foods um, and Peter Makitas, they have been recognized for doing great work for youth. And last night, I know they had an event with the Food Project, which of course teaches kids how to grow the food. Mm -hmm. And you were there and you gave a proclamation. Why is something like that important to you? Well, it's nice how the pieces fit together. Um, we have been working very hard to teach people um, healthy ways of living. Um, everything from giving bags of healthy groceries at some of our elementary schools for the children to take home. Um, the Ingalls School Garden is a great example of being hands-on and being invested in that. Um, we have 20,000 pounds of vegetables per year wow. on average that come out of the Ingalls School Garden. And I know from experience, my daughter brought home a little tomato plant one time 
and surprisingly, I, I didn't kill it. And it grew <laughs> to the point where it outgrew its Dixie cup, and we had to put it into the soil in the ground. Um, and from that, we got a cherry tomato plant. And she actually started eating the tomatoes off that plant as a snack which she wouldn't have touched the cherry tomatoes before that. Right, yeah. So from there, um, we expanded our garden, and then it eventually took up the whole side of the garage. But without us even trying, she developed a healthier way of choosing her snacks. And I think Sai Kim Foods is just a great complement to that whole effort because they feature good-tasting, healthy selections of foods. Mm -hmm. um, last night... I went over to one of their counters, one of their displays, and they had spinach and pineapple and mango and bananas. And I thought, together, all fresh mm. ingredients waiting to go into a blender. Oh. And they were coming up with these cups of green something. And I thought, well, I'll be brave. I, I don't know about liquid spinach, but I'll try <laughs> it. <laughs> and it was really, really good. And it's very healthy. Um, I know I can lose several pounds, and I would love to be able to great. find things like that, foods like that, that are good for me and good tasting. And and Sai Kim really fills that niche very, very well. And they're doing it, you know, so much for youth, but it, it is good for the whole family to be able to learn. And you look great, but I think everyone can stand to eat, you know, a little healthier um, when they're running around and they're busy. And if the things are right there, like you said, um, well, that, so. That's it. I had heard um, a food expert on, on TV one morning. She was being interviewed, and she said, you know what one of our biggest problems are? Too many of us, when we open our refrigerator, we grab the first thing that's in there. And often the first things that are in there are the leftovers, the leftover pizza, the leftover macaroni and cheese. And she said, instead, just put a bowl of grapes up there at eye level so that when you open the fridge, the first thing you're going to see and grab is the bowl of grapes. And it seems so simple, and it almost seems obvious, but I think a lot of us don't do that. And, and I've tried to make that effort, but um, so good. the pizza does end up in no, front sometimes. But that's a good point. Like, I'll put a vegetable in the vegetable drawer, and I'll forget that I bought it because it's out of sight. So um, it's exciting. You know, last night I know that event was great. You go to a lot of community events, and... Um, you know, you've done things with the United Way. Um, you, uh, you know, go to uh, new organizations when they're first opening, like Center Board and all these places in the city. Uh, you know, why is it important to you, in addition to the policies and the politics, to get out and go to community events, even when it's not campaign season? Because I think it's very important to, to be knowledgeable about what's going on in the day-to-day -day world around Lynn. I can read reports that come across my desk. I can, you know, investigate facts and, and write up a state of the city address to, to let people know what's going on. But to really take the pulse, a person simply has to get out there and immerse themselves in the community. And I love to be around people. It energizes me to be around people. I love to give back to my community. I love to help my community whenever I can. Um, in fact, tonight, LISOA, which mm -hmm. is the Lynn Youth Street Outreach Advocacy Program, started up a couple of years ago. Its mission is to keep the kids off the streets, keep them from turning to gangs, provide them with more constructive alternatives for the use of their free time. Uh, they're having a casino night tonight, and I have volunteered to be one of the blackjack dealers awesome. to raise some money for their programs. And it's um, activities like, like that that really keep me going. I, I just love to be out and about in the city. And I'm sure while I'm there, I'll be hearing anecdotes hmm. about how this child got saved, how this child had a summer job instead of hanging around and, and playing video games and being on Facebook with his friends, that he went out and he helped to rebuild a playground or he helped to clean up the streets and, and make, the, make his home a better place. That's awesome. And actually, we have to go to a break, but I want to say how many cities can you go to and have the dealer at a casino night fundraiser be the mayor. So that's very <laughs> cool. Uh, we'll be right back after this break. Stores. You can help too by 
Chinese. I am Russian. I am East African. I'm Canadian. I am Filipino. I am Irish. I am Bulgarian. Korea. I am American. I am Brazilian. Italian. Mexican. I'm British. Swedish. French. I'm Israeli. Mongolian. I'm Sada. Japanese. I'm we are mankind. Hi everyone, welcome back to today's Link MTV show. Joining me is Mayor Kennedy. Thank you again for being here. And can I just say, um, I'm sitting here and the people in the audience that are watching on TV obviously won't know this, but you have some Lintec interns here. I do. Behind the cameras. And they have been very professional they're doing and, and very good at what they're doing. So Sam and, and LaShawn and Amanda's in the And Amanda control. in the background. Yep. Thanks. I hope this is a great learning experience for you. They do a wonderful job. We're very fortunate to have them as part of our team, and so it's a, it's a, great, it's a great thing. Thank you for mentioning them. And Dave, who's been with us for a long time since he was a Lintech intern, is smiling at me. I didn't for, we didn't forget you, Dave. Wow. Um, yeah, I know, right? I didn't we know kept that. him. We did. We kept him all he, the way since he was a teenager. We've watched him he's grow. He's been a fixture here for it yeah. seems like ages. Started as an intern, went through college, graduated, got a job part time here, now full time here. So thank Terrific. you, Dave. Uh, you know, we've been talking about tonight's event is, you know, benefiting young people. Uh, we just mentioned the, the staff here. We talked about Side Kim. There's a lot of great organizations and a lot of youth, um, you know, things going on in the city to keep the positive going. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of the things that have come up that are on a little bit um, more of a, f a recent basis and that are on a more serious note are the um, the police had a call put out and there was a shooting um, where they shot an individual. The circumstances around that, um, people are looking for answers to. And I know that there's been an investigation going on, but what is the situation as far as if they haven't heard results yet, can you talk a little sure. bit? Sure, and, and I know it must be very frustrating for the people who are waiting for those answers, uh, myself included. Mm -hmm. um, we have heard everybody loud and clear um, who have been at the Veterans Parade back in September, um, most recently were at City Hall mm -hmm. to express their concerns about the amount of time that it's taking for the investigation to be completed. I can tell you that I met with the police chief as recently as yesterday. Um, we were meeting on an entirely different matter, but I did ask if there was any progress or any news with the result of the Dennis Reynoso investigation, and he's still waiting on the DA's office. And the chief did point out a very um, significant fact is that most recently in Essex County, we're all aware of the tragedy that occurred in Danvers. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that some of the DA's resources are going to be diverted into that investigation as well, um, but we will hear from the DA's office about what happened. And once that information is made available to me, I will make sure to release it um, to uh, the general public so that they're aware of uh, the conclusions as well as myself. Okay, and that just so people know, it goes from the DA's <coughs> office, they will inform the chief, you'll be informed, and then you can make sure that the community is informed. Is that just about, just yes, about right. excuse okay. me. Typically, um, the DA's office will give us a heads up of a few hours. They will either issue their findings by way of a news conference mm -hmm. or by way of a press release, but the DA's office knows that once their findings are reported that there will be follow-up questions from the media and they want to give us time to prepare for those follow-up questions. So I will get a couple of hours heads up before the general news is released, um, but we'll let everybody know, okay. you know, in a timely manner once we do have those results. And of course it's a tragic situation um, all around, no matter what the results are, the situation is not one that anyone would want to see happen, so. Well, right, I mean the, the bottom line is that a young man lost his life, mm -hmm. and that's tragic, um, whether it's justified or not justified in the end, 
Um, we don't we don't want to see that happening in our community. Um, we don't want to see people die young. Uh, so. And it, and it's good to know that you know you are asking the questions and and helping to get the answers. So for people who are wondering about that, I just wanted to make sure that they knew that this is something that's being worked on. Yes. Uh, another thing that has come up is sometimes you've got people talking with all the different projects that you've been working on with with GE, with um, people bringing up about the parcel of land um, during the debates, the parcel of land up on Route One, all these different things with land and what's happening and what's going on. The waterfront is one, right. and the waterfront is something that also I know is a process. But when people are saying, well, is any progress being made or what's taking so long, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, as, as you know, the waterfront is made up of a number of different parcels. So generally, when we're talking about the waterfront, we're talking about everything as far south as the General Edwards Bridge, which is the bridge that connects Revere mm -hmm. and Lynn all the way up to the so-called Beacon Chevrolet site, which is the site right next to Heritage State Park. Mm -hmm. So each of those parcels has a unique um, history to it and a unique um, perspective or prospective use. And let me start at the north and I'll go <laughs> south from there. Okay, the Beacon, the so-called Beacon Chevrolet site, the northernmost site, um, had an issue because there was a landlocked parcel in the middle of that, as well as an easement that runs through it. And there were some complications with the title of that land. It is currently privately owned. So that landlocked parcel issue got resolved. We had to do a land swap with the state, which just got resolved about three weeks ago. And what those legal maneuvers did is made that into one big usable parcel. So that one is now better for sale. It's it's much easier to sell a property with that cleaner title than it would be with a landlocked parcel in the middle of it and and um, the the land swap not being done. So I don't want to interrupt you. I was going to nope. say that I know that's just one piece of, of many pieces and I wanted to give because we're, we're going to run out of some time okay. and I just wanted to say <coughs> that, so that, that one piece took time to resolve it and that's only one of many. Yes. So this is where some of the time constraints come in as to why it's not, hey, look, new waterfront. Right. And I can tell you that there is an international deal in the works. It has been in the works for a long, long time, but international deals in a down economy take some time. That's on one of the southern, uh, the southern most sites. And another problem with the southern sites is it's not really a problem. It's just an explanation of why it is taking longer than many people um, like. could see is is normal but the owner of that land is a Mr. Joe O'Donnell. Mr. Joe O'Donnell is also a stakeholder, a significant stakeholder in the Suffolk Downs racetrack. So I sense that Mr. O'Donnell is going to be wanting to wait and see what happens with the casino proposal at Suffolk Downs racetrack before he decides what the right. most appropriate use for his land is on the South Harbor. So I think that will all resolve itself and, and the picture will become much clearer in due time. Um, the casino proposals are going to be acted upon in January, I believe. Okay. So I, I think we'll see some more progress um, in the near future on, on all of those waterfront puzzles. It always goes by so fast, but I just wanted to say we have about a, a minute, minute and a half left, and I oh. wanted to just, if you could tell people, you know, what your your hopes and your goals are going forward, um, you know, if you're able to continue in office, what you most want them to know is your focus. What would you want them to know? I want the people the inside and outside the city to know that Lynn is open for business. It's a great place to live, great place to raise a family, our schools have been improving significantly and steadily. Um, our auditorium is, is bustling. Uh, now we'll soon to be year round. The restaurant scene down, downtown is something to behold. Uh, the business climate is good. And I think people should give us a chance and come stop by and say hello. Well, we appreciate the time that you took. I know you have a very busy, busy um, yes. schedule going on right now, and we appreciate talking to you about some different things, about things you're passionate about, and also uh, 
you know, the dog park. You care about you care about animals. I I, <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I think a lot of people do. Um, other towns have actually had a lot of trouble getting things like a dog park started. So it may sound to some people small, but it actually, if you want one in a community, is not an easy feat. So thank you for that. Very, very happy to provide it. And it provides a great community gathering spot for the humans as well. Definitely. And so okay. we appreciate your time. If people have questions or want to find out more, her information um, has been up throughout the um, show and you can see that on the screen. Um, but we know that you have a Facebook page, you have the City Hall website, which you've made very open and transparent so it's easy to find your way around if you have not checked out that page. And uh, we wish you well, but you know, going forward, um, please keep up the good work. I know you have a lot of things going on, so thank you for your time. Thanks, Cassie. Great to thank be you here. Guys. Thanks. I hope that's okay. It was.